Hey there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the food experience. Today's experience, grilled chicken enchiladas. Well, not just grilled chicken enchiladas, but grilled chicken, bacon, and grilled onion enchiladas. And I'm making my own Tex-Mex inspired type of enchilada sauce. It's so good. Like I tried the sauce yesterday. I came up with the sauce. Um, there's a bunch of different sauces like this on the internet, but I added what ingredients I think should be there and it came out banging good. So without further ado, there's a lot of stuff going on. Let's get to it. I bought a couple chicken breasts yesterday, putting the chicken into a Ziploc bag, using Chef Marito chicken marinade, Put enough in to make sure everything gets completely covered. And I'm adding in some freshly chopped ginger. And also make sure that it gets well distributed. Remove the air. And into the refrigerator it goes for at least an hour. Time to put together a spice blend for the enchilada sauce. Going in with two tablespoons of San Antonio Red, one tablespoon San Antonio Original, one tablespoon of Cowtown Light, one teaspoon Nora Chicken Bouillon, one teaspoon of ground cumin, one teaspoon of paprika, I'm using Hungarian paprika for this one, half a teaspoon garlic powder, teaspoon of dried oregano, and I like to put it between my fingers and kind of rub it between my fingers to activate it. Quarter teaspoon of onion powder, quarter teaspoon salt, and a half teaspoon black pepper. And stir that up to combine everything. And set this aside until you make the enchilada sauce. You could even cover it up. Time to dice up an onion. Ta-da! I'll cover these and set these aside for later as well. Next, I have seven strips of bacon. Looking to cut these up in fairly small pieces. First, I cut the bacon in half the long way. And repeat with the second half. And it's a good idea to get all this prep work done while the chicken is marinating, which is what I'm doing. And as soon as I'm finished with this, I'll start one hour timer for the marinade. That way it'll be going about an hour and a half in total. I'll cover this and put it back into the refrigerator. First thing is to make a roux. Preheating this pan, adding in a tablespoon of oil and two tablespoons of butter. Let that get all melted. Add in three tablespoons of flour and stir aggressively. And you want to stir till everything is well combined and turns golden brown. And you really want to keep stirring it so it doesn't burn. Dumping in the spice dump. And I'm doing a little bit at a time. Make sure to keep stirring. Don't stop, folks. Otherwise, that chili powder will burn, as well as the other spices. And I'm going to put the rest in and really get it going. And you'll start to smell the chili powder in addition to the other spices. It starts becoming very, very fragrant. And if you feel it's getting too hot, you can certainly turn it down. I'm only at 212 degrees on this cooktop. Now I'm adding in a bit of chicken broth, about a cup. Turn up the heat a little bit. And you want to keep on stirring. You shouldn't feel anything solid at this point. It should be well incorporated into the chicken broth. Once that's been stirred in for a few minutes, go ahead and add the remaining cup of chicken broth. Turning the heat up a little bit, you want to get it to be 
a really hard simmer, like almost a hard boil. And you want to keep stirring occasionally, that way everything stays well combined. And it's very watery right now, but it definitely will thicken up and it'll take about 15 minutes to kind of cook down a little bit. There we go, it's getting to that nice hard simmer right there. I'm gonna bring it down just a tad. Make sure to keep stirring it. You don't want any of it to burn. Switching over to a wooden spoon. And you'll notice it'll start to get thick. But definitely keep stirring occasionally so it doesn't burn. The sauce has been cooking down for about 15 minutes now. I'm gonna turn it down. Definitely super thick. Check this out, folks. Nice and thick enchilada sauce, or as you may call it, chili gravy. At this point, it's good to take a taste test and sample it to see if it needs any additional salt or pepper. Here goes. Oh, that's good. That's really good. And it's definitely like a chili sauce. I'm setting that aside for right now. Removing the chicken from the marinade and blotting off the excess marinade. And it was marinating probably close to two hours, I want to say. Also adding an additional pollo seasoning from Chef Merito. I like my meals super flavorful. So just a very light dusting. And I'll repeat that with the remaining chicken. Over at the max, install the grill grate at the very bottom. Make sure it's all the way back, drops down. Kind of wiggle it, make sure it's in place correctly. It shouldn't slide around. And it'll also cover the elements and temperature probe. Turning it on, oven mode, go to grill. Setting the time a lot higher than I actually need. It really doesn't matter. And lowering the temperature to 370. Start it up. The reason why I'm going with 370 is there's less likely a chance of any chicken fat smoking up because the smoke point of chicken fat is right around 370. Make sure it completely preheats. As you notice right here, it says 68. That's the temperature of the grill grate. And the grill flashing right here indicates the internal oven temperature. So when the internal oven temperature reaches 370, the grill light will turn solid. The grill is up to temperature, it reads 370, and the grill light is solid. Putting in the chicken. The chicken's actually been cooking about six minutes. Let's flip it over. Oh, that looks good. That looks really nice, folks. I'll let it go for another six minutes, and then I'll check it with the temperature probe. I want to temp it, see where we're at. Almost there, not quite. It's at about 150, and this piece is about 140. I'll turn them over one more time to complete the cooking. Let's see what the other side looks like. Oh, yeah. Looking good. You can always count on the max for your chicken needs. I'm thinking they gotta be done now. Let me check deep in. Yeah, 173, that one's good. This one, ah, that one could go a little more. It's at about 150. Remove this one. Meanwhile, I'm tenting this one in foil. Definitely should be done by now. 168, yeah, looking good. Removing that piece and adding it with the other one. Stop the max and remove the grill grate. I've been preheating my flat top, applying some oil, butter, and the oil will help prevent the butter from burning. One large onion. Adding the bacon. You want the bacon to get nice and crispy. Try to arrange it in a single layer as much as possible. And let's not be stingy, let's get 
some of that bacon grease over there for the onions. Bacon's starting to get a little bit crisp. Onions are getting nice and browned. Everything's looking groovy. I'd say the onions are looking pretty done. Setting the onions aside, bacon's definitely coming together, looking nice and crispy. Perfect. I'd say it's done as well. Gathering up the bacon. Quick cleanup of the flat top. The chicken's all cut up. Time to make some enchiladas. Time to prepare some corn tortillas. Putting these aside, covering them with a kitchen towel. I've had the enchilada sauce staying warm on the stove, stirring it occasionally, and it's definitely super thick. This should be really good, folks. Time to assemble the enchiladas. First, you want to dunk the corn tortillas in sauce, let the excess drip off. Also, I want to take a little enchilada sauce and put it on the bottom of this pan. Put in some chicken. Bacon. Grilled onions. Kind of push it back to one side. You don't want it right in the middle. And then roll. And place the seam side down. Also basting on a little extra sauce. Adding a little bit of Monterey Jack cheese. Preheating the max oven bake mode. 350. Start it up. Max is up to temperature. Inserting them into the bake to position for 10 minutes. There we go. Time's up. Let's remove them. Oh man, those look really, really good. I'm putting them back in just for a second, a little bit higher up in the regular air fry position. Turning on air fry, I'll leave it at 425 just for a couple minutes to let the cheese brown a little bit more. They've been going a couple minutes and I think they are done. Wow, that looks so good. Time to plate them up. I've also been cooking some rice. Put a little bit of sour cream on top. Looks like they're good to go, folks. Welcome back everyone. Here I am with the chicken enchiladas and rice. Time to dig in and check them out. Oh wow, those are good. Oh, those are really good. The rice. Hmm. Did you take a picture? Mm hmm. I got my dad with me. Say hi. Hi. You like them? Oh, yeah, they're, they're all right. They're delicious. Oh, okay, good. Fantastic. Good, good. Like, I never tasted anything like this before in my life. Good. A lot of time and effort went behind these, and they turned out amazing. Sure, they are. They are, huh? Yeah. And they're not spicy or anything, really. No. I haven't added anything to make them hot. 
but I just may do that with one of the remaining ones. I might add some Reaper Joy cheese to it. Yeah. I don't know if you could taste the bacon, but there's uh, nice bacon bits in there. Yeah. Good, huh? Good, yeah. And the onions, the grilled onions, that bacon sure makes the difference. Like, it's really good with the bacon. They may not be authentic Mexican enchiladas, mm -hmm. but I'm pretty sure they are close to the Tex-Mex style. I've never really had Tex-Mex, but from when I was looking it up online, this appears to what it would be like. Cleaned up on those bad boys. I'm grabbing one more, but I'm going to put a bunch of Reaper cheese on it. Be right back. That's how much Reaper cheese I put on into the oven it goes to let it melt. Just removed it from the oven, and you know what? I am so silly. I forgot to put the Cotija cheese on the first two enchiladas, but I do have it on this one. And just something about that cheese. It's nice and salty. It's a great addition. Here we go. This time, it should be nice and spicy the way I like it. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, with that cheese, it has a good kick. It's a white cheddar cheese that's been smoked, and it's got reaper powder all over it. It is such like the best. This is some good eating, folks. I'll tell you what. So, I'm going to tow us out of here now. It's that time. Look in my description. I'll have the full recipes to make this dish. And I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Chicken, Bacon, Onion, Tex-Mex style enchiladas on the food experience. And if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, drop me a line below. I love hearing from you. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I got all kinds of good things coming up. And until next time, have a stellar day. Be excellent. And most of all, remember me, I'm KJ Andy O, your food experience host with the most. Y'all take care, and I'll see you next time.